Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe and I've been solo travelling for over 15 years. I have been to over 50 countries and today I want to share with you my top tips for dealing with long haul flights and how to cope with them especially when you're of a certain age. So there's a really miserable day here today in Stratford-upon-Avon and I wish I was flying somewhere warmer now. Yes, that's my garden. I've spent years building a jungle garden to now sell and uh, she's coming to ripple the bamboo up. Anyway, let's get on with my tips. So tip number one, and it's a pretty obvious one, is to wear loose clothing. And I'm always very careful to make sure that you have no elasticated wristbands or around your ankles. Just keep everything loose and it doesn't matter what you look like. So just be comfortable. And that's my top tip, but definitely nothing elasticated because, oh, it, oh, it does hurt after a bit and it, it stops your circulation. It's not great. No elastic. And the other thing I do is I will wear a very light t-shirt and then I'll take a couple of hoodies with me, like a light hoodie and then a thicker one. Everything that zips up because what I find on the planes is they go from really hot one minute to freezing cold the next. I don't know why it has to keep going like that, but you can just never get your body temperature right. I always get on it and it's always red hot and I turn my fan on and it's freezing. Um, yeah, and then I'm freezing and I'm up and down and through there. So layers, you know, one big jumper is just going to be too hot for you. So just, I keep like layers with me. And when you're not wearing them, you can, they give you an extra cushion. So, you know, they're not wasted. Now for me, I have little legs. I'm only short, I'm only, uh, well, not even five foot one. And... I I find if my legs aren't stable um, as I'm travelling, and this is the same if, I, if I'm actually in a car or a train, but if they're like dangling or too loose, um, my knees will start to hurt, uh, my ankles will play up. And you don't get footrests on planes anymore. Well, very few planes seem to have them. And so what I do is I make sure that my hand luggage is quite bulky and I fill it with on the top with clothes or scarves or a jumper or something so that I and then I use it I put it under the seat but stick it out enough that I can use it as a footrest and I find that really helps to not get my legs don't feel so tired when we're traveling and when I get off the plane they don't ache as much so it's a good tip if you are like me with short legs and dangling for too long it's just not comfortable my third tip is kind of related to that is swollen ankles and there are lots of things you can do for that but swollen ankles and I think I find as I get older they get worse and they're pain, they get actually quite painful and it can be very difficult for the first sort of three or four days after a flight to get going you know walking becomes painful now I've tried compression socks and I know for some people they, these work and that's great but for me they don't work. They just make everything very uncomfortable and I just can't really cope with them. But And I've tried many things over the years but what I find now is I keep my trainers on. I don't take my shoes off while I'm on the plane and my trainers, let me just grab them and show you, they have ankle support on them so they they kind of go around my ankle as well and I wouldn't travel without trainers that support my ankles I actually only ever walk with those sort of trainers now as well I, I live by them but I so I keep them on all the time I keep my feet up on my bag so they're not dangling and I find that really works for me you need to find what works for you because I swollen on ankles are no joke but I found if I do this, my ankles are not swelling anymore. Now the fourth one is backache. So I get a pain right here in the bottom of my back. And after 
four or five hours it's really difficult to get comfortable now people laugh at me for this trip but I, I actually take a weightlifting belt with me on the plane yes I have to keep taking it on and off in security but I wear this and I find if you've got it on it supports your lower back and I found that if I wear that throughout a fly, I don't get that niggle in the bottom of my back anymore. It was actually a, a I, I really hurt my back once before I was due to go on a flight to Thailand to see my other son. And my mm. older son, who's a personal trainer, he gave me this tip. He told me to wear it on the flight and it worked. And ever since then, I've always worn it on long haul flights. And security, as long as you take it off when you're going through, they really don't mind. It's absolutely fine. Five, I always take my own pillow or cushion. Now, you can get those ones you put around your neck, but I, oh, those little, oh, for me, they don't work. So I actually take my own pillow. And I also use my pillowcase to take extra stuff with me. So last year when I went to Antigua, I wanted to take some cushions to leave there so because because I stay there quite you know for three months at a time and I like to have my own things around and I couldn't fit them in my case so I put four of them like palm on top to the side in a pillowcase zipped it up and I just walked through as, as it, it was you know my hand luggage they never said a word they just said oh you've brought your own pillow no one says anything so not only was it more comfortable because I could like snuggle up I actually got to take more stuff with me as well. I liked that tip. So I keep that zipped up pillowcase now just to carry stuff in. But you can put anything soft in it. Um, you know, if you need to take a few extra clothes or something, just shove them in a pillowcase. Use the pillowcase on the flight and uh, bypass um, your weight allowances. They never even weighed my cushion. So number six is book early or check in as soon as you can to get the seat that you want i like the window seat but i know a lot of people like the aisle seat um so i always check in as soon as it opens to make sure i've got the window seat i know on some flights you can book your seat in advance and i always book a window seat then but sometimes you can't or it you know it's cheaper to not book it until check-in time so just you know be on time with that get the seat that you want nobody wants that middle seat when they're traveling on their own um because it's, it's just uh, isn't it you can't really put your head anywhere to have a sleep it's it's just horrible um so yeah get your seat and if you're really worried about it just pay for the seat in advance you know, if you're doing a long haul, it's fine if you're doing a couple of hours, but when you're going 8 to 16 hours on a flight, you want to sit where you're going to be comfortable. And it's worth paying a bit more if you have to. Right, number seven. Number seven, water. There's no point even asking for water on a plane. They give you a tiny little amount. It's not enough. So I always have Evian bottled waters because I find that, you know, you can refill them and they're a good shape. But if you have your own <coughs> permanent bottle or you use the Evian ones and keep refilling them. But what I do is I take two empty ones with me through security and then I fill them up in the airport. Now, not all airports have water machines, which I think is really naughty because if you won't let people take their water through, and then the airports charge you, what, three, four pound for a bottle of water. It's absolutely outrageous. But most airports do have them now. And I was pleased to see Heathrow have started putting them in. Um, so that's what I do. And then I fill them up. And every time I go for a security, I go and find the water fountain and I fill my bottles up. And I make sure I've got at least two bottles of water on the plane with me. Because you get dehydrated so quickly. And they don't give you enough water when you're on the plane. They just don't. Number eight. Now, at our age, we need to be careful of this and make sure our medication is in our hand luggage. I know it sounds um, quite simple, but it's quite easy to pack it away with your toiletries and your makeup in, your, in the luggage that you're going to put through the hold. But always make sure you have your medication on you. And... 
that if you're doing a long haul flight, don't forget to take it because if you have to take it at a set time, yes, you might have to adjust it a little bit because of the time difference in the destination you're going to, but make sure you don't miss one day by accident. Um, you know, set yourself a time to take it and make sure you take them. Number nine, I always like to feel clean on a plane. I mean, it's very hard to be completely clean. You can't go and have a shower or, or anything, but I always take my toothbrush and toothpaste with me. Toothpaste is fine. It's usually under 100 millimeters. You don't need a travel size. Normal one is within the limits to take through with you. And um, I always have some like wet wipes with me. So just so I can like wa wash my face and around my neck and that, but, Oh, if I couldn't brush my teeth for 16 hours, uh, I, I would not feel pleasant. So I always take my toothbrush with me. And um, I take my bottled water to the bathroom with me to put my toothbrush and rinse my mouth. I don't think I want to use the tap water in those bathrooms. No. I'm sure it's fine, but... Mm. Mm. Now, number 10 is exercise. Now, especially at our ages, uh, we do get stiff quite quickly. So when I'm sitting in my seat, I am constantly doing this with my feet, keeping them going, circles, always doing something. And I also take time to walk up and down the aisle. And I do lunges up and down the aisle and I do squats while I'm waiting for the toilet and I do heel races. And people look at me like I'm a little strange, but I don't care. I just do it. And you'll see me do my lunges like this all the way up and down the aisle. At least, yeah, just do whatever you need to do to stretch your legs out and feel more comfortable. And if anyone's staring at you, don't worry about it. So, number 11. If I'm doing a long haul flight, I try whenever possible to make it a nighttime flight. Now, I know some people say they can't sleep on planes and they don't like that, but I actually, over time, have got used to it, and so now I can sleep. Um, on a plane and especially at night. Now a couple of tips to make that easier is if you're on a flight that's seven or less hours if you can without having to break the bank at an airport restaurant like if you can get in a lounge or something is eat before you get on the flight so that you're not waiting for the meal to come. If you eat you can just settle in put your eye mask on and get yourself to sleep and stay asleep. If you want to have breakfast or, or, or your meal, like just like leave a note or something. Take some post-its with you and put a note up to say whether you want to be woken up for breakfast or your dinner. Now, I, I take little post-its with me and I just put it up to say, can you wake me for breakfast? Because I like to, you know, it's nice to have a cup of tea before you get off the plane and, and stuff. I'm a tea drinker, I don't drink coffee, so. Um, that but I don't have my evening meal on the plane I get myself comfy and I go to sleep and for me I wear an eye mask and I keep it on you know even if I can't sleep properly and you don't sleep like straight off like I mean I've done it a couple of times I've I've just slept and I'm not woken up till we've landed uh, but in the main I you're like nodding off and waking up and nodding off so I find by keeping an eye mask on and not lifting it or looking just don't let any light in just keep your eyes closed you will nod off again it's not going to be the best sleep but you know it's some sleep and uh, headphones so for me, for me, or earplugs, it's it's not so much the noise of the plane and people talking, although that is part of it, but it's the humming noise that the plane makes. So I wear my headphones and I have very light music playing, just just to help me sleep. So it could be some meditation music, or it could be something, you know, it's not rock and roll music like I would listen to when I'm awake, but you know, it's something a bit mellow. But just to try and cancel out that humming noise that you hear on the plane because <clears throat> I find that very disturbing but earplugs if that works for you or anything but anything that makes you comfortable and helps you sleep because you will feel better for it when you land now there have been a couple of occasions I remember when I went to Kenya and I don't know why we got on the flight about uh, eight o'clock at night 
and I was in a row of three. I was on the aisle, there was a space between us and there was a guy on the other side. And the next thing I know, we were landing and all he said to me is, how, how did you do that? And I said, I don't know, but I did, I followed my rules. I put my, it before I got on the plane, put my mask on, put my blanket on and just laid down. And I fell asleep and I, I must have been so tired, I didn't wake up. And, and that's the other tip is do make sure when you've got your blanket on, whatever you've got on, put your seatbelt over everything. Otherwise, you will get woken up to have it checked. So they do tell you to do that, but it's worth doing it because it's really annoying when they wake you up. But that's their job. You can't blame them for that. <clears throat> and the final, uh, my final tip is alcohol. So it's, um, it's always tempting when you've got free alcohol on a plane, um, relieves the boredom, and especially when you're going to the destination because you're in a bit of a holiday mood and, and stuff, is to have a few drinks. And I'm not judging anyone that wants to have a few drinks on the plane. Because I actually find sometimes, like a couple before you get on the flight, just a couple, no more, because otherwise I have a banging headache, a couple could help me sleep but um, in the main I uh, you know I would be very careful of how much alcohol you drink on a flight um, especially if you haven't got your water with you because it does dehydrate you and it although you might not feel bad then it, you won't feel great the next day so I'm not judging anyone that wants to have a drink I'm really not because I like to have a drink myself but that's just my tip is don't go mad Anyway, uh, those are my main tips for how to cope with the long haul flights that are really, well, it's a means to an end, isn't it? You have to do them. And of course, these are in economy. I mean, if we can afford it, we'd go business class all the time, wouldn't we? But uh, we'd have less money to spend at our destinations. So it's worth it. I hope some of those are useful. If you've got any additional tips, feel free to add them in the comments. And as always, this has been a pleasure. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.